Then Sorab led them into the land of Iran, and their track was marked by desolation and destruction, for they spared nothing that they passed. They spread fire and dismay abroad, and they marched on unstayed until they came unto the White Castle, the fortress where Iran put its trust. The guardian of the castle was named Hujir, and there lived with him Gustahim, the brave, but he had grown old and could no longer aid with his counsels. And there lived also his daughter, Gurda Farid, a warlike maid, firm in the saddle and practiced in the fight. When Hujir saw from afar a dusky cloud of armed men, he came forth to meet them. And when Sorab saw him, he drew his sword and demanded his name and bade him prepare to meet his end. And he taunted him with rashness that he has come forth thus unaided to stand against a lion. But Hujir answered Sorab with taunts again, and vowed that he would sever his head from his body and send it for a trophy unto the Shah. Yet Sorab only smiled when he heard these words, and he challenged Hujir to come near, and they met in combat and wrestled sore with one another. And stalwart were their strokes and strong, but Sorab overcame Hujir as though he were an infant, and he bound him and set him captive unto Human. But when those within the castle learned that their chief was bound, they raised great lamentation, and their fears were great. And Gurda Farid too was grieved, but she was ashamed also for the fate of Ujir. So she clad herself in burnished mail therein, and she hid her tresses under a helmet of room. And she mounted a steed of battle and came forth before the walls, like a warrior, and she uttered a cry of thunder and flung it amid the ranks of Turan, and she defied the champions to come forth to single combat, though none came, for they beheld how she was strong, and they did not know it was a woman, and they were afraid. But Sorab, when he saw it, stepped forth and said, I will accept your challenge, and a second prize will fall into my hands. Then he made ready for the fight, and the maid, when she saw he was ready, rained arrows upon him with art, and they fell quickly like hail and whizzed about his head. And Sorab, when he saw it, could not defend himself, and was angry and ashamed. Then he covered his head with a shield and ran at the maid, but when she saw him approach, dropped her bow and picked up a lance, and thrust Sorab with vigor and shook him mightily, and almost threw him from his seat. Sorab was amazed, and his wrath knew no bounds. Then he ran at Gurda Farid with fury, and seized the reins of her steed, and caught her by the waist and tore her armor, and threw her upon the ground. Yet before he could raise his hand to strike her, she drew her sword and shivered his lance in two, and leaped again upon her steed, and when she saw that the day was hers, she was weary of further combat, and she sped back unto her fortress. But Sorab gave rein unto his horse, and followed after her in his great anger. He caught her and seized her, and tore the helmet from off her head, for he desired to look upon the face of the man who could withstand the son of Rostam. And lo and behold, there rolled forth from the helmet coils of dusky hue, and Sorab beheld it was a woman that had overcome him in the fight, and he was confounded. But when he had found his speech, he said, If the daughters of Iran are like unto thee, and go forth into battle, none can withstand this land. Then he took his rope and threw it about her, and bound her in its snare, saying, Seek not to escape me, O moon of beauty, for never has prey like you fallen between my hands. Then Gurda Farid, full of wile, turned her unveiled face to him, for she beheld no other means of safety, and said, O hero without flaw, is it well that you should seek to make me captive and show me to the army? For they have beheld our combat and saw that I overcame you, and surely now they will jibe when they learn that your strength was withstood by a woman. It might be better for you to hide this adventure, 
lest thy cheeks have cause to blush because of me. So let's make peace with each other. The castle will be yours and all it holds. Follow after me then and take possession of what's yours. Surab, when he listened to this, was beguiled by her words and her beauty. And he said, You do wisely to make peace with me, for these walls could not resist my might. And he followed after her unto the heights of the castle, and he stood with her before its gates. And Gustahim, when he saw them, opened the door, and Gurdafarid stepped inside. But when Surab would have followed after her, she shut the door behind him. Then Sorab saw that she had fooled him, and his fury knew no bounds. But before he recovered from his surprise, she came out onto the battlements and scoffed at him, and counseled him to go back where he came from. For surely, since he could not stand against a woman, he would fall an easy prey before Rastam. When the Pahliva should have learned that the robbers from Turan had broken to the land, Sorab was made even madder by her words, and he departed from the walls in his wrath, and rode afar in his anger, and spread terror in his path, and he vowed that he would yet bring the maid unto subjection. In the meantime, Gustahim the aged called before him a scribe, and bade him to write unto Kaikaus all that was come about, and how an army has come forth from Turan, whose head rode a chief that was child in years, yet a lion in strength and stature. And he told how Hujir had been bound, and how the fortress was likely to fall into the hands of the enemy. For there was none to defend it, save only his daughter and himself, and he craved the Shah to come to their aid. When the day followed yet upon the night, Sorab made ready his host to fall upon the castle. But when he came near, he found it was empty, and the door stood open, and no warriors appeared in its walls. And he was surprised, for he knew not that in the darkness the inhabitants had fled by a passage that was hidden under the earth. And he searched the building for Gurdafarid, for his heart yearned after her love, and he cried aloud, Woe is me that this moon has vanished behind the clouds. Now when Kaikous had gotten the writings of Gustahim, he was sore afflicted and much afraid, and he called about him his nobles and asked their counsels. He said, Who can withstand this Turk? For Gustahim likens him to the power of Rustam, and says he resembles the seed of Neriman. Then the warriors cried in unison, To Rustam alone can we look to in this danger. And Kaikous listened to their voice, and he called for a scribe and dictated to him a letter. He wrote to his paliva and invoked the blessings of heaven upon him. He told him all that had come to pass, and how new dangers threatened Iran, and how to Rustam alone could he look for help in the struggle. He reminded Tehem Ten all that he had done for him in the days that were gone by, and he asked him once again to be his refuge. He said, when you receive this letter, stay not to speak the word that hangs upon your lips. And if you have roses in your hands, don't stop to smell them, but make haste to help us in our need. Then Kaikous sent forth Gyu with his writing to Zobolistan, and bade him neither rest nor tarry until he could stand before the face of Rastam.